Welcome, guys. Welcome. Coach Neil here, back with another interview. I have a, another very special guest today. Um, but I want to introduce those folks who are new to my channel. My channel's vision and mission is health and wellness concepts to help you upgrade your, your uh, existence. Now, when I say health and wellness concepts, this isn't just about nutrition, because of course, you know, I cover that. And I may talk a little bit about fitness and so forth and so on. But we talk about health and wellness that has everything to do with our entire person. So not just our physical health, it can also include our mental health. So with all that said, I want your, I want your attention focused up here because I'm going to introduce our guest for today. She is a TEDx speaker, four-time best-selling author, on-camera host, and health and wellness advocate. We have with us today, Megan Gallagher. Megan, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Neil, for having me on. I'm so excited to be here today to share my tips um, and really just to be of service. I love sharing my story, so I'm very honored. Guys, and, and thank you so much, Megan. So I just want our viewers to know. Uh, so Megan, um, she is, she's got some very interesting information to share with us today, but it's very practical. It is solution-oriented, and yes. it does have to do with mental health in particular. Um, so we're going to talk about that. And so we know that ties into our overall wellness. So Megan, can you start us off and please share a little bit about your background? Um, maybe get into why you felt called to use this experience from your background to encourage others. Yes. So I truly draw so much inspiration um, really from my own childhood, I have personally had a ton of experience with anxiety and panic attacks. Um, I, you know, vividly remember when I was a freshman in high school, I was just suffering and I was in such a low place mentally, um, despite, you know, being the extrovert, bubbly, goofy person that I still am today. I was just really barely hanging on. Um, and so I remember honestly, you know, since there were no open conversations about mental health, about self-care, about, you know, just kind of like happiness and how to live your best life, mind, body, and soul. Um, I really felt like, you know, shame and I felt really guilty and awkward because no one was talking about mental health, like not my school, not my circle of friends, like everywhere I went, it's just people talked about, you know, like the typical stuff, go to college, get this GPA, do this. And I'm like, you know, honestly, it like, it's helpful for sure. But I just constantly was like, oh my gosh, I guess I really am, you know, the only person that feels like insecure and not good enough and all these awful things. Um, so at 14, you know, I literally, kind of hit a mini rock bottom, if you will. And so I became really inspired. Um, I literally, and when I say this, I do mean literally, I asked my parents <laughs> to go to therapy. I wanted to get help. I wanted to feel better. So from 14 to now 26, I've done close to 12 years of therapy and uh, kind of like in between, I've done EFT tapping and hypnotherapy and all of these really cool techniques that I feel so grateful to have had the honor of trying and the privilege of really just, you know, having um, all these like tools in my tool belt that I get to have for the rest of my life. So I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I just, I need to give back. I, I felt so lucky that I got the help when I needed it. I did so much inner work. Now I'm like, a successful, happy, healthy adult. Um, and I'm like, how can I, you know, really give back and kind of help people that are maybe not, and, and, you know, like not a great place. So I have dedicated the last eight years to speaking at schools. Um, I started out at YMCA's and boys and girls clubs, and then I did high schools and then the word spread and it slowly, you know, got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then that led to two TEDx talks and speaking like Two weeks ago, I spoke at Georgetown University um, over Zoom, but it was still amazing. And then, you know, I've written four bestsellers on Amazon um, and it really just, I will always say this till the end of time, but everything that I do, I always, you know, 
go at it with a genuine heart. It's just, it all comes from kind of like, you know, a hug to my younger self. It's really healing when I get to speak to teenagers um, and sort of, you know, be the person that I wish I was at that age and really, you know, sharing a, um, a powerful message. So it's very impactful. Um, and it never, like I, it just never gets old when I get messages from people that are like, oh my gosh, you know, you're talking this clip in this video, it changed my life or it helped me, you know, make a healthy choice today. Like whatever it is, um, it means the absolute world to me. So positively impacting others. That's what I'm getting out of that. So taking that experience that you had as a young individual yeah. and growing into understanding where that, that journey, where it took you, yeah. and here you are today and what you're giving back and that's so important. Um, mm -hmm. So how about you share with us some statistics, uh, some things that we need to know about mental and health challenges, especially when we talk about young adults. Yeah, so... A really startling statistic is one that actually in my first TEDx talk when I was 20 years old, um, it's something that I mentioned and unfortunately it still, you know, reigns true. Um, it's one in every three young adults. So ages 13 to 18, one out of three um, will struggle with a mental health disorder in their lifetime, but specifically when they are a teenager. So it's, you know, really unfortunate um, because it's just only, you know, gotten worse since the pandemic, since COVID-19 started. So it really breaks my heart. Um, and honestly, just from my own experience, I, you know, really can't even explain the amount of DMs, like, up to the thousands just in a weekly basis from teenagers all around the world that are struggling. You know, maybe it's a boy on a football team in Wisconsin who is just feeling not good enough despite being like the, you know, uh, all-star athlete, the guy who gets A pluses, or it's, you know, a girl in Arizona who is trying to navigate a breakup with a toxic guy, like whatever it is, I just get so many DMs from people that, they're real teenagers, you know, in real, in today's world. And they're like, I, you know, am barely functioning or just give me a tip, you know, what's a healthy breakfast recipe, like whatever it is, I am always open to responding and really giving like my best opinion from my own life experience. Um, but I mean, it's, I don't know it, you know, like when I wake up and when I go to the gym in the mornings, like on the TV, you know, it's like, just the heavy, the negative news is just really disheartening, but I feel grateful because I'm really doing the best that I can and, you know, doing my part, um, using my platform and all my resources to really just give solutions. Like that's one thing that I really wish in my own high school, I wish that they prepared us for real life, you know, despite the here's how to get into college. Here's how to write your, you know, like this letter and SAT prep and all these things. I really wish that my school gave us like the students really, really tangible tips of how to be happy, like how to make a health, like how to know if you're happy in your job, you know, the simple things that sometimes people think are cheesy, but it's like, I think that those things really determine how successful you are, you know, like if you wake up every day with a smile on your face and you're really happy and you make healthy choices and you hang out with positive people, like all of those things to me, that makes someone successful. I mean, you know, I just, so I will forever stand by that. Um, but yeah, it's the statistics every day are so startling and really hard to hear and to watch, but I feel proud because I really, um, am doing my best to create the space that I needed when I was younger, but to also, um, you know, create the space with every blog that I write, every post that I make, I really want to like give that warm virtual hug to whoever is reading it or watching it. <laughs> So those statistics, one in three, just to put that in perspective for yeah. our viewers, think about this, guys. If you're standing in line at the bank or at the smoothie shop, wherever you are, if there were 10 people in line, you can bet two out of those 10 are 
challenged and struggling with mental health, uh, we'll just say mental health challenges. And yeah. so that's just the, what the statistics say. Um, so what are, let's, let's use that as a great segue and talk about, give me a solution. What, what's a tool or tip that you have shared uh, amongst your, your many interviews and talks and so forth and so on that, that you have uh, given crowds and, and individuals before? What is it that maybe you find helpful? Yeah, so my number one tip is movement. I swear by this. When I was 14 years old, I started a daily routine where every day after school, I would come home uh, where I grew up. There was a really cool trail that I could just go run on. So I would just run because it made me feel better. And it kind of was like a stress reliever. So for me, it's got to be movement. I swear by it. I really think that moving your body, however you can, whether you have five minutes, 10 minutes, just like dancing around your apartment, your house, uh, going on a run, going to a boxing class, like whatever it is, taking your dog for a walk, getting outside, breathing, moving your body, it will release endorphins. Um, you physically feel better. You've pushed yourself, you know, physically. So then you'll mentally feel stronger as well. And the benefits are endless. So I swear by exercise. Okay, you guys heard it here. Of yes. course, you're, you're probably thinking, where, how does this tie into health and wellness coach? Well, you heard it from Megan. She says yep. movement is movement one of the- all um, the time. Absolutely. Share another one with us besides movement. What else? Yeah, so my second best tip would be uh, breath work. I think breathing, movement and breathing definitely go hand in hand because if you're running, you know, you're breathing. But truly, I find that whenever I feel overwhelmed or my mind is in, you know, like 4 million places at once, um, bringing it back and focusing on my breath. So, you know, let's say I am just feeling, you know, anxious and my breathing is up here and it's like shallow. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, you know, I have to get this at the grocery store. I have to make dinner. I have to call my mom. I have to write my grandma a card. Like we all have a million things to do. So <laughs> I feel like literally it sounds interesting, but it's like pushing out your stomach. It's called like, you know, diaphragmatic breathing. It's your diaphragm pushing out your stomach and exaggerating that movement. It really is helpful to get more oxygen to your brain. And like, it's powerful because, um, breath work is an actual class. Most yoga studios everywhere have classes that are literally called breath work, where you lie on a mat um, you lie down, you have blankets, a yoga mat, and you just push out your stomach in and out for 30 minutes and you do it very quickly. And all of a sudden, you know, you'll start feeling pins and needles and tingly, but it's basically all of your red blood cells are being reoxygenated. And that's what that feeling is. Um, but it's so good for you. It is so healthy. And I just, I think, yeah, breathing is amazing. Um, I personally, am a fan besides breath work and movement. Also ice baths, the gym that I go to has like, it looks like a hot tub, but it's 25 degrees Fahrenheit. It's ice cold and you go in it for however long you can push yourself. I do three minutes and that is a place where I do the deep breathing. And it's so cold that it, um, is really great for post-workout. You know, it, uh, kind of like constricts your blood vessels and it's so good for any swelling or injury or inflammation. But um, yes, breath work, any type of breathing is fabulous for just clearing your mind and you feel like you're on that, you know, natural high. So it's really, really good. And if any of us are, uh, of course, we, we can think back on how many times maybe we've run across someone in our lives that looked at us and maybe we're getting a little flustered. We're getting a little worked up and they say, hey, yeah. take, a, take a deep breath and calm down. Just yeah for a second you know so that's kind of you're, you're giving us the uh what i call the the blueprint on how to make that happen right yeah um, and that that's fantastic so there's there's one more now you and i have talked about this. we talked about brain dumping do you want to get into that real quick oh my gosh brain dumping is one of my favorites so the term brain dump you know some people may find it kind of like funny just that word but um it's you can also call it journaling like whatever makes you feel good but basically brain dumping is anytime yeah you feel scatterbrained like you're thinking about too many things at once it's a great way to take out all of your thoughts and just put them on paper so you know yeah like let's say you're just your mind you're like okay 
I need to like chill for five seconds. Um, so basically you can, you know, literally, yeah, like write down all of your thoughts and put them on paper. So it's really helpful, you know, cause you get to see which thoughts are negative, uh, which thoughts are, you know, in the past helpful, positive, repetitive, catastrophic, um, or just rumination, which is basically your mind is in the past replaying something. So it's helpful because you can kind of like, you know, give each thought like a category or a genre. Um, so I find it really nice because, you know, you really get to like reevaluate what is worth taking up space in your mind, you know, like, is it worth it to think about what uncle Bob did at Christmas dinner two years ago? No, it's not, you know, that's doesn't need to be in your brain. So I kind of, yeah, write down maybe like the top 20 thoughts that I'm thinking right now. And I just really will reevaluate, you know, which ones are super high up, you know, priority really, do I need to think about this? Uh, which can create space, you know, for more positive thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. Now that, that, if anything, I think for anyone out there, that is a game changer. Yeah. Uh, and I've worked with a coach before and, uh, and one of her recommendations was that I, I do a brain dump for just creativity and getting ideas down on paper, but it can work in the other, we'll just call it in reverse when there's things that are not positive and not, yeah. uh, not the sorts of thoughts that we need to fill our head with. We can get rid of those things on paper as well. So and that's what we're talking about here is how to how to brain dump those thoughts and get them out on paper so we can deal with the things in life really that, that are going to be more positive. We'll just say it that way, right? That's yeah, it. it's like it's seriously it's so healthy whether, you know, you do it maybe, um, you know, some people have like their mid afternoon like coffee pick me up. Some people have a brain dump, right? Like you could write down your thoughts um if you just reach like you know 1 or 2 p.m and you're like okay my mind needs a little uh <laughs> a little zhuzh or something um people also do it a part of their morning routine or their night routine um some people find it you know helpful to write down all your thoughts before you go to bed or right when you wake up um so yeah you can just have like a I just think it enhances your life in so many ways. Like you just can't go wrong if, you know, you are writing down your thoughts and just really seeing, you know, which ones are helping you like move forward, become better versus like making you bitter or hindering your growth. I just, I'm all about like moving forward in life and, um, you know, making positive yeah, strides to just living your best life. So I think a lot of it all starts up here. Oh, a hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. There's no doubt. So uh, for our viewers out there, guys, you know what, that's a very practical tip that you should consider. Have you not yeah. really taken time to write anything down? This is a great tip. So Megan, yeah, you are available for talks um, in person. And yeah. I was thinking, hopefully I'm not speaking out of turn on that. Um, how do people reach out to you and get in contact with you? What other ways may they do this? Um, even if, of course, they want to maybe just pick your brain about something. So how might they do that? Yes. So my, the best way to contact me is my website. It is www.meganwgallagher.com. I have my contact information. I also have my speaking agents, they help, you know, negotiate deals and all that good stuff. So all their info is on my website. You can contact them. If you are hosting an event, a seminar, a conference, um, or if you work at a school, you know, if you're a teacher or anything, you want me to come speak, all of my agents info is there. You can reach out to them. I also blog every single Sunday. I love talking about lifestyle wellness tips. So all my blogs are there. Um, and then I also have my books, uh, all of the books you click on, it takes you right to the Amazon page. And as an author, it means the world to me. If you leave a review, um, I take so much pride in my work and it comes from a very genuine place. So if you leave a review that like, yeah, I could jump up and down for hours. Um, but yeah, so that, you know, Megan W. Gallagher, that's my Instagram handle, Twitter, Facebook. I also have LinkedIn. Um, I have a YouTube channel. I 
have all the platforms. So, um, and I also on Instagram, I do answer my DMS, but I have a rule. I only answer them if they are positive. Um, I will not respond to negativity. I'll block you or just delete it. Um, I only respond to positivity, but yeah. <laughs> all right. You guys heard it here on the channel. She only responds to positivity. So if you're going to come to Megan for anything, please make sure it is positive because we want to breed oh. positivity. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Megan, I want to say thank you so much for being on today's oh. interview. Really appreciate it. Guys, Megan Gallagher, again, TEDx speaker, four-time bestselling author, on-camera host, health and wellness advocate. If you like today's video, please click that like button down below and click subscribe as well as we look to bring you more content. I'm going to place Megan's, uh, the link to her website down in the description down below, guys. So please make sure to visit her at www. Make sure I get this right. MeganWGallagher.com. Did I get that right? I did. I did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Guys, again, thank you so much. Megan, thank you again, guys. Until next time, this is Coach Neil. Thank you, you for having me on. Uh, thank you. Okay, I'm going to boom.